Hello and welcome to the Destination Sailing Channel on Yachting International Radio. I'm Carla. And I'm Simon. And we are from the YouTube sailing channel Sailing Ocean Fox. Over the past three years we've sailed over 25,000 miles on our catamaran through the Mediterranean, across the Atlantic and the Caribbean. In these series we will be looking at some of our favourite islands, towns and remote caves we have visited during our adventure. This will give you a fresh insight on your next destination, what to expect on arrival, places to stay, things to do and how to find those all important provisions, from propane to bananas. So let's start with this week's location, Cartagena, beautiful Cartagena. Absolutely stunning city. This is just a kaleidoscope of um, beautiful things to go and see, isn't it? Yeah, and this the fact that you are just moored into town, it yeah. makes it special, yeah, doesn't it? it does. Because it makes you feel so powerful because you are just in the centre of the town, yeah. isn't it? I feel like that. Right? I, 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 it's brilliant. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant place. That's why we chose it. We last visited in 2018 on our way through the Mediterranean from Mallorca down to Gibraltar and we're actually planning on going and visiting it again, again. in about a month uh, yes. and uh, yeah. we're really looking forward to it because we enjoyed our time there. And we discovered that there's some more things to do, to do yeah, there. Yeah we so, did, yeah, yeah we did. So anyway it's located. It's located around 200 miles northeast of Malaga on the Costa Blanca coast. Uh, Cartagena is a major naval port and it has been over the centuries to be honest and it's also a uh, tourist um, cruise ship port. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's home to 215,000 people. This is swelled each summer by the tourist trade, which is big. They are big in tourism. They, they are, yeah. they are. This is one of the major centers really. Yeah. And a little less known uh, compared with say uh, Barcelona or um, Malaga. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. The port has a history going back to 243 BC when it was first developed by the Hasbrula people and became a trading centre for the region. So it's actually been going an awful long time. Yeah, so it's a lot of history to it see there. Absolutely. Yeah. So the language is Spanish. They speak Spanish, which is an advantage again if you want to learn Spanish. Absolutely, you like <laughs> Spanish, don't you? <laughs> so the weather, the climate is typically Mediterranean. The summers are warm, muggy and mostly clear skies. The winters are long, cold, dry, windy and partly cloudy. The temperature typically varies from 43 to 84 Fahrenheit. Yeah, it gets really hot and muggy in the summer, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it yeah, does. And you kind of want to be on the coast and get out to some of the uh, local anchorages or something like that yeah. to get a bit of wind. Mm. Uh, no surprises, the uh, currency is the euro. euro. Uh, navigation uh, entering this port is really not a problem uh, day or night. And it's got good voyage and a uh, big fairway going into it. So really no nothing of an issue there. What I did discover though is that the courtesy flag for Spain doesn't actually have the crest on it. No it doesn't. No and I didn't realize that. Yeah we did, we did, we did yeah because uh, we uh, we bought a load of um, like football bunting and then cut them all up and turned them into courtesy flags. That's but, our problem we visit too mm. many countries so we mm. try to buy uh, these flags as cheap as we can because yeah. they are they can be quite expensive they you can pay around 17 80 dollars for yeah. each flag yeah. so we try to buy the cheapest and often you can. only use them for a couple of days yeah, you know yeah, so it's so. Uh, yeah uh, the voyage for the region is a uh, standard European voyage, region A, which means the square rep top boys are on the left hand side as you enter the port. So uh, Cartagena is a port of entry, yep. uh, you can check in, you can easily do anything you need in Cartagena. Yeah, you can, there's no problem what there is whatsoever. Yeah. Now it has two main marinas, uh, they're right next door to each other on the main front. Uh, the real club regatta is as you come into the harbour on the left hand side. Uh, that's for mostly for local boats, but we actually managed to get in there, didn't we? Yeah, we now, did. You, you do this funny thing where you radio up the marina and whichever marina happens to answer, they tend to be the first one to get the yeah the, client. the traffic, so <laughs> to speak. It's a bit of a competition between the two of them. So as I say, in the real club, the RCGR is on the left hand side. They've got a lovely swimming pool. They, they do, do don't yeah, they? I remember now. Yeah, we went beautiful there. swimming pool. Yeah. And we actually uh, went around the back of the marina to the uh, where you go in, and then we actually went on the quay, which is all rather nice. Yeah, and it just was. a small note, it is the cheapest one. It is the cheapest one. Yeah. So maybe Very affordable. book ahead and try and get in there. Yeah. The other marina on the right hand side is Yacht Port Cartagena. 
Yeah. And they're more for visiting boats. They've got 310 berths and they can take a boat up to 140 metres, which is really rather large. Mega yeah. yacht place, mega yacht place, yeah. <laughs> but um, th th that's a good marina and I think you don't have a problem finding a berth there. No, no. just call them on channel 9, nine. Uh, and one of, one of them will answer. Yep. Just uh, try to choose the cheapest one if you are on if you have a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, the one other thing is that you will pay for electricity and water at both yeah. these marinas. Yeah. Uh, here in the Algarve in Portugal, we get that free, free. or included. It's included, yeah. it's not free, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are no dinghy docks because you are not allowed to anchor in the port area. Uh, so, uh, no dinghy docks, no dinghies, not allowed. No. Yeah. So, a few at Raw Mega Petroleum's inside the yacht port Cartagena Marina, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And also you'll get camping gas there. That's the three kilo blue cylinders which you get all over Europe. Uh, uh, that, that's ready available. Yeah. So supermarkets, you can have anything you want from uh, hypermarkets to the small shops on the corner. You can find anything you want, any variety of fruits and vegetables. You know, you have the street markets as well, which are very good to go in Europe. Uh, because you can find very, it's much, much cheaper. The fruit and vegetables are much fresher, so it, they will uh, last longer in your fridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, chandris, uh, there's loads of different chandris and marine shops uh, spread over the city. Some of the better ones are a little bit further back, like a mile inland. Um, but uh, there's plenty there for you to go and find out whatever you want. I don't, really don't think it would be a problem getting no, something no, at all. No, no. Uh, hardware stores, you have Leroy Merlin, uh, which is the French... Uh, yeah, it's a big, huge chain. one. You get yeah. all over Spain. You have yeah. everything yeah. there yeah. you need, yeah. yes. Yeah. You no yeah. have no problem yeah. finding yeah. anything you need for your boat. Yeah. 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 Uh, boat yards, uh, right next door to the Cartagena Marina is Varadero Ascar. Very good. Cool. Yeah. I'm getting better, better aren't I? <laughs> uh, pronouncing this, uh, these sort of Latin words. Now, they have a travel lift uh, and they also have a dry dock. The travel lift it goes up to 200 tonnes but I couldn't actually find out on the website uh, how wide um, it will be so if you've got one of our big catamarans I think you'll be in a slight problem now mm. I think it's a little bit narrower than catamaran size but uh, they've got uh, very clean facilities there and uh, they can help you service your boat or paint it or do whatever you need to do. Now anchorages as we said anchoring is forbidden in the harbour area but there are actually two anchorages in the sort of uh, estuary area. Yes, behind the island of uh, Cabo Tinoso to the west and Cala Cortina to the east. Now these are uh, reasonably well protected uh, depending on the, on wind, the, direction. On the wind direction yeah. and that's going to be the one that uh, actually falls you there. Now if you go a little bit further to the east there's a vast bay of El Ports. It's possible to anchor really anywhere around this bay. Uh, a bay and there's also a little marina there at uh, Playa de la Quines further to the west. Yes, to the east you have the Bay of Portma in the Cala de Gorgel uh, where you can anchor. However, the port is seated up too much for yards. Yeah, there's a, a little club uh, Rio in there, so a sailing club in there basically and you could take a dinghy in and discover the little fishing port but uh, chances of you getting even a shallow draft vessel in there, apparently, according to the pilot book, is remote. You go around the peninsula, you then got the La Manga Strip and the city of La Manga uh, along there, which has everything uh, for the yachtsmen, the marinas, it's got uh, boatyards, and it's also got a vast lagoon on the inside, which is uh, very well protected. And if I remember rightly, we dragged. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did drag there, didn't we? Yeah, we dragged there in the middle of the night. We woke but... up in the middle of the night and we were in the middle of the channel. Yeah, I, is... I, I was thinking of all the jellyfish. Oh, the jellyfish. Oh, the jellyfish. It's, it's a jellyfish world. They even have uh, nets around the uh, certain meters around on the beach, you know, mm. from shore, mm. because for people can go and swim because yeah. it's so yeah. much. So this much. is on the inside of the lagoon, actually. Yes, yeah. yeah. And if you do go around there, spot Hotel Illegal, uh, which is on your way, which is a vast hotel built around about 20 years ago on the cliff face there. And uh, it was built illegally. They didn't have a license to build it, and they've actually painted into the uh, facade hotel and legal as well fun yeah you can see from when yeah. you go on the coast from your boat yeah. you can see it yeah so what is there to see so you have the theater 
Yeah, the uh, the Roman theatre is the second largest uh, Roman theatre on the peninsula. Which is amazing to go because you are just anchor just across the road of the theatre, so it's uh, you know it's just five minute walk. Yeah, right in the middle of the, town. Of the town. Kind of like uh, yeah. doing your daily shopping and then woof into the museum. Yeah, and up into the. And that is impressive. Theater. That is yeah. very very impressive. They did a wonderful job um, rebuilding, didn't yeah. they? Because yeah. they. The integration between the old and the modern is beautiful, beautifully made, and uh, they really preserved, you know, the old there. So yeah, it is it's fantastic. amazing. And it's uh, big, big. It's huge. Oh, it's huge, yeah. yeah. Just uh, unfortunately for you guys listening as a podcast, we're just showing some stunning photos of the area <laughs> at the moment. Uh, there are also many museums to visit. Yes, many, yeah. There's one museum which would be of interest to all of us because it's uh, what's been found on the seabed basically so it's all old pottery, uh, treasures and things like that and that's um, uh, quite a fantastic museum to go and see. Agua it's called. Um, there's a tourist office close by uh, to the marina and you yeah. can go in there and you can buy a ticket to go around all the sites. All the sites. So sort of yeah, you save a lot of money if yeah. you do that if yeah. you want to go because it's like a um, free run to everything you want yeah. to go and you pay one price. Yeah, see, that's so right. So that's really actually worth going yeah. to see. So Cartagena has a walled city inside the fort, Thunder Hill, uh, overlooking the town, which is called Castillo San Felipe de Barajas. It is a very, very nice place, not to be missed. Uh, it uh, brings goes back to the colonial times, yeah. isn't it? It was yeah. built about 400 uh, years ago. They, they really did defend this city uh, quite a lot, and a lot of the defences are still there. Yeah. yeah, because the city was very exposed uh, for uh, the, the for, for people to for attack, to, it. To attack it. Yeah. So they built this fort on the hill. It's, it, they say is where well, was one of the best um, places to defend the city. Mm. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of old uh, buildings in uh, Cartagena, uh, going back um, Gothic and Art Deco uh, designs. And fortunately, there's an awful lot of bars, restaurants, places oh, yeah. to sit and the, soak and up that it's live, Iberian. Uh, culture. Let's hope that next time we go there everything is open so, oh, we, yeah, can... <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we can enjoy a bit of that yeah, because it's yeah. been missing for months yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, We're hoping to get out of uh, Portugal in the next couple of weeks actually and uh, move on uh, towards um, uh, Gibraltar yes. along the uh, Cadiz yeah. coast of uh, yeah. Spain. Yeah. Connections. The connections. So, so international flights from Murcia Airport, 30 minutes away. Yep, so you can go uh, or get all your flight connections to other European cities. I'm not sure about international flights coming in from abroad, but certainly uh, flights from uh, all major places in Europe. It also has rail connections from Barcelona to the north and Malaga to the southwest. Yeah. yeah fantastic place. Yes, very good. Yeah. We actually really enjoyed it, didn't we? We did. We did really enjoy it. That's why we are uh, planning and stop there again on the, yeah. our second yeah. uh, run. So yeah. we really want to stop there and go yeah. and see a couple of things that we have missed on yeah. the first yeah. uh, visit. And also I think there's quite a lot of little uh, bays and places around there which we missed because we were on a bit of a mission to get to Gibraltar to get yeah. some work done to the boat uh, mm -hmm. before we cross the Atlantic. So I think this time we're going to go a Yeah, this time we're going to go a bit slower yeah. and enjoy more yeah. these uh, little places on the way. Yeah. Yes, that's for sure. So thank you for listening to our channel on Yachting International Radio. Uh, just a reminder that you can see our adventure on YouTube at Sailing Ocean Fox. Yes, there are episodes 27 and 28. I will put the link in the description below. So next week we're off to the fantastic islands of Bermuda. You're going to love Bermuda. We love Bermuda. We love Bermuda. It's uh, beautiful. And, and just in case you didn't know, there's actually 13 islands in Bermuda that make up the group. And that's not including all the little islets and caves which are there as well. Uh -huh. So fantastic place. Yes, that's Soak so up the sun. Uh, wonderful scenery. Beautiful place to go. We're really looking forward Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is Simon and Carla on Yachting International Radios. Until next week, yeah. fair winds. Fair winds. Bye for now. Bye.